Hi, this is Nikki Lynn Bean from PhotographersBlingMagazine.com and today I'm going to show you how to add um, some realistic blue tones into a blown out skyline. Sometimes when you're photographing out um, sunset, dusk, it really doesn't matter the time of day, it's really easy to um, get a great shot with skin tones of your subject um, and your skyline because there's so many clouds and so much light is diffused up in that area, um, it will blow that area out. So I am going to show you a quick easy way to bring in color into that part of the photo. So to start with, I'm going to show you this really cute picture of my twin girls. Um, and I'm just going to take you step by step and show you how to do this. So what we're going to do is multi we're going to duplicate the background layer. You can just drag your background layer down to this little piece of paper. So you instantly have a new background. Um, the second thing we are going to do is choose the fourth tool down as our magic select tool. So we're going to go ahead and use that. If you can't see it, it's because your quick selection tool is highlighted. You want the one that looks like a magic wand. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to um, highlight this area. And then back over here in our layers palette, we are going to choose the little icon that looks like a point and shoot camera, a little rectangle with this white circle in the middle. Kind of click that. Instantly what this has done for us is it's given us a mask where we have um, the white area on top is going to be the area we're going to be working with and white reveals and black conceals. So the black area where we don't want any of the color from the sky that we're going to be adding is going to be blacked out. The next step is going to be to come over in your toolbox and pick your gradient fill, which is about halfway down underneath the eraser tool. If you don't see it, it's probably hidden behind the paint bucket tool, so just go ahead and uh, right click it, choose gradient fill. We are going to come back to our layers palette and make sure our background layer is selected. Make sure that the um, Make sure that the masking layer is not selected. So background layer selected. We're going to choose a couple of um, colors that mimic a natural skyline. So we're going to go in here and we're going to choose, um, I'll pick like a darker blue color. And then I've also picked a lighter blue color for um, my alternate color image. For this particular image, what I'm going to do, because there will be no editing real really with this type of uh, edit is going to be we're going to come up here to our um, gradient fill box and we're going to choose the second option. The second option will choose your um, primary color, your top color, and it will um, gradient, it will kind of transition down into no color in a very realistic way. So once that's done, again we have our background layer highlighted, we have our gradient highlighted, and we're using a blue color for the sky. We're just going to click and drag our mouse from the top of this image down to about here. And then in doing that, what we've done is added a really natural looking skyline to our image um, without having to do anything else. It's pretty darn easy. Um, I'm going to show you really quickly how to, you can see there's this little piece of skyline here that didn't get um, added in. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, pick our masking layer. We are going to choose a brush and we are going to choose black because we want to um, we want to conceal that piece of the sky. And then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to paint it out. Well, we're going to make sure our opacity is up at 100% to do that. So we'll, um, sorry, we need to pick the white brush. Black conceals and white reveals. Remember that, people. All right, so there, we've just taken that unnatural piece of skyline out that um, wasn't selected with our magic select. And then now here we're left with a really great overall image. Um, the last thing that I'm going to show you real quick, this isn't part of the free tutorial, but I'm just going to show you overall my action, my um, pictures looking a little um, bleak. So what I want to do for you is I'm just going to play my one minute bling action. Lightning fast here. And I just went ahead and um, lightened the image. This uh, again is called bling lightning. It plays in like two seconds and instantly adds sharpening to the eye, softening to the skin, depth to the hair. So um, we've gone ahead and we just did that. So you can see our um, before image with just our sky highlight and you can see our after image with um, the Brighton Magic. So um, that action is again available at www.photographersblingmagazine.com and it's called Bling Lightning. So okay, back to our cloud tutorial. So th that's one way we did, again, gradient fill. We picked a blue color and we went down to about halfway and then um, 
very natural skyline and looks um, really good. You can see this is our before image and this is our after image. So the next thing that we are going to do um, is we're going to show you how to add clouds in there. So let's go ahead and open the image back up. And this time we're going to add an actual cloud to the image. So we have this I'm sorry, I'm looking for my clouds. Here they are. So what we're going to do is add these clouds to this background. So the first thing we want to do is take our image. We want to duplicate the background layer. Done. Super easy. Then we are going to use our magic select, which is, again, the fourth tool down. We're going to go ahead and select that background, and then we're going to click over in the layers palette, and we're going to add a mask. Same, same exact thing we did before. Now what we're going to do is bring our cloud into the picture. So we're just going to drag it in to the picture. We are going to get it where we want it. You want the horizon line to kind of be realistic and to meet up where it's going to go. So we'll go ahead and we're going to do that. Hit enter when it's done. The next thing that we want to do is we want to have this these clouds added into our masking layer from our previous um, layer. So what we're going to do is hit the alternate or option key. We're going to hold that down while we hover our mouse over the layers palette. You'll see if you look over the layers palette my a mouse turned into a little arrow with a circle on it and once that happens you just click the button and then this instantly adds this top layer image into that area which you have selected. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, pull this out and you can see instantly, we have a few areas in through here that don't look very realistic, and I'm going to show you how to fix that. But for um, the intents and purposes, you can see this added this right into where we want it to go. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to make that top cloud layer. We're going to multiply that layer so that it multiplies over the bottom ish, the bottom uh, layer. Sorry, that was my uh, phone. That's my instant message tone. Okay, so once we have this set to um, multiply, and there's all kinds of different options here. You could do um, screen, which you can tell that totally washes it out. You could overlay it, which really doesn't give us much. Um, you can do um, normal, which is where it was before. You could do a soft light. You could do a hard light. But we, again, are going to choose multiply because I think it looks the most realistic. So there it is. Now what we want to do um, is choose this masking layer from the second um, copy of our background. We want to go in and we want to choose a black brush and we want to take away, so again, we're picking the paintbrush, we're choosing black for our primary color and we're going to take our opacity. For this video I'm going to leave it at 100% so you can see it because I know sometimes it's hard to see. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to take out right along this line. I'm going to actually make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm going to take out some of this um, where it added the clouds in with that mask so that we get more of a um, so we have more of a realistic flow to that horizon line because that's really 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 important is that you, whatever changes that you're making they need to look realistic. If it, if it looks like a cartoon drawing by the time you're done that's no good. So you're just going to carefully kind of take that you're going to fix those up a little bit. There's also some um, areas up near her hair that in my opinion, yeah, they need to be fixed right there, right there. Okay, and then if you want to pull in some of the clouds, now we have sort of these white unrealistic areas. So we're going to pull some of those clouds back in. We're going to pull them in at like only 30% and we're going to use a smaller brush. So we're just going to pull those cl those clouds in those specific spots back in, but we're going to do it at less opacity so, you know, it looks real. We want it to look real. That's some of my, I think my biggest pet peeve is seeing um, so many edits where people try to get creative, but it doesn't look realistic. And if it doesn't look realistic, in my opinion, it's not a good edit. So... This, I think, looks pretty good in my opinion. We have added in the areas where we need to. We have the realistic cumulus clouds up through here that look really good. Um, and that looks pretty good there. So you can see again, here is the clouds that we've added in. 
And here's the before image. Again, this is with the clouds, and this is with the before image. I'm going to go ahead and zoom this out a little bit so you can get the full effect of it. You can see the difference is really, really dramatic, but also very realistic, very subtle, very pretty. Um, the last thing that I want to show you, and this is a free download um, action with this um, tutorial set. We're going to go ahead and flatten the layer here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to play the action that you got with this and it's called Selective Focus. So we're just going to go ahead and play that. One of the things that's really important when we are um, doing clouds in the background is to make sure that your depth of field for your clouds and for your background are similar. So if you've added clouds in and your background was naturally um, blurred, you can see the depth of field here. We have really blurry skyline, I mean really blurry, blurry gla uh, grass, excuse me. And now all of the um, sky is like super crisp. Well, you would never get that effect taking the camera that way. Your, your people are going to be really in focus with this particular shot, but everything else is going to should be out of focus. So with this action that we just played, we're going to go ahead and we are going to make sure our white brush is selected. We're going to make sure that the white color in our paintbrush, we're going to paint this in at, we can start with like 30% and then decide how much more we want to go with it. Um, and then we're just gonna, I'm gonna pull this in for you so that you can see it. We're just gonna go ahead and we're going to add the selective focus. And basically what this does is this lets us decide that we don't want the clouds to be as um, in focus as the rest of the image because it doesn't look realistic. And again, my pet peeve. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that. So we have now softened the clouds so that they look like they were an original part of the image very important step in my opinion with this. This action is also great um, if you are a newborn photographer and you're trying to like blur the background in your um, newborn work or anytime you just want to selectively focus. Play this action, add some selective focus to your image and you're golden. So you can see again this is on the after image and this is the before image and you can really really see that there is a huge um, impact between the before and after you have the option of your client um, wanting to order a large print, chances are if they see this, they're gonna choose a big print. If they see this, they might get a five by seven. So it does really add um, a nice impact to your pictures. So I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. Again, that's a free action download at photographersblingmagazine.com. Um, we really do believe that sharing is a good thing and we try to share for free as much as we possibly can while we're keeping ourselves in business and we hope that you will pass the word and you will share with other people. Um, please feel free to drop us an email at photographersbling@me.com. at me.com. We'd love to hear from you and in the meantime have a great day.